Hello, the Gallivant and Gingers here, and today we're going to go on another Chattanooga sightseeing adventure. It's a cloudy and cold day, and we also have a dirty windshield, which I'm sure you've already noticed. Today we're taking a trip up Lookout Mountain, and our first stop will be the Craven's house. There's a small, narrow road leading up to this house. It looks kind of like a driveway. Just go up it. Just put the Craven's house in your GPS, and it will take you there. There's plenty of parking once you get up to the house. The house is only open on weekends, so we won't be able to go in today since it is Monday, but we will do a tour of the grounds. This is the Craven's house. I want a brick path like this going up to my house from my driveway. As you can see, this is a two-story house that is fairly large, and this house was owned by Robert Craven's, but the first house built here was only one story and it had six rooms. It was called Alta Vista and was completed in 1856. This is the oldest surviving structure on Lookout Mountain. It has a wraparound porch that I absolutely love. And could you imagine sitting in a rocking chair on this side of the house looking out at that view every day? Isn't that gorgeous? You can see the Tennessee River down there and the city. Robert Cravens was an iron master and he came to Chattanooga in the early 1850s. By the late 1850s, he was an established businessman in Chattanooga and was considered wealthy at that time. Chattanooga was just a small railroad town back then. In September of 1863, the Battle of Chickamauga happened and Chickamauga Battlefield is not far from here in Georgia. We will take y'all over there in a few weeks. It was the second deadliest battle in the Civil War next to Gettysburg. In Chickamauga, 16,710 Union troops and 18,545 Confederate troops lost their lives. After the Battle of Chickamauga, Chattanooga became overrun with U.S. troops, and Confederate troops encircled the city from the north end of Missionary Ridge to Lookout Valley. Robert Craven supported the Confederacy, but was against secession. Up here on Lookout Mountain, the Confederate troops occupied the summit, mid-slopes, and base. For months, the Cravens family lived in a siege within a siege. Confederate officers lived inside the house with the family, while the enlisted men were encamped all around the front yard. The Cravens continued to live here in their home, even though it had become a Confederate main line of defense against potential attack. Eventually, the constant shelling from U.S. cannon forced the family to leave and they went down to Wood Station near Ringgold, Georgia. That isn't far from here either. On the morning of November 24, 1863, the battle above the clouds began and U.S. troops came up the mountain and by early afternoon, the Confederates had been pushed back beyond this house. During the night, all Confederates were withdrawn from Lookout Mountain and they moved to join their forces on Missionary Ridge. And I'll also have to do a video of Missionary Ridge. There's a lot to see over there. After the battles for Chattanooga, the city became the military base of operation for the Atlanta campaign. And with the hustle and bustle of military movement in Chattanooga, many newspaper correspondents came to the area and they set up camp here in the Cravens House front yard. And this is where they wrote, sketched, and took photos. Now, this house had been hit by cannon and small arms fire over and over, but it was still intact after the battle. But in the days following the battle, the house was almost completely stripped away. A lot of the house was used as flooring for the soldiers and the newspaper correspondents' tents and also as firewood. And many soldiers took pieces of the house as souvenirs symbolizing their experiences up here on Lookout Mountain. The Craven family returned to Lookout Mountain at the end of the Civil War, and Robert Cravens decided to rebuild the house during, it was around 1865 to 1866. And he lived here until his death in 1886, and his wife lived here until her death in 1896.
In the 1950s, the Cravens House was restored to its present post-Civil War appearance by the Chattanooga Chapter of Association for Preservation of Tennessee Antiquities. Today, the Cravens House is administered by the National Park Service. And as you can tell out here, they have a lot of monuments, they have a lot of historical markers, and I'm taking pictures of all of these historical markers, and I will put them on our Instagram page if you want to actually go to the Instagram page and read what they say, because there's a lot of information on these markers. Over here on the side of the ridge is a spring house, and it's very wet today, so I'm not going to go up in there. I'm sure they had a way to get the water from the spring house over to the cistern which we will walk over to that side of the house next. In the spring and summertime, this is kind of hidden away back here behind all the leaves and vines, but it's more visible in the winter. I'm going to get Nolan out of the car and let him walk around the side with me since there aren't any people over here. Look at those huge boulders. And there is a beautiful old house that goes with this old garage on the other side of that wall. It's not part of the Craven House property though. And this is the Ohio Monument. And look at all those steps down. This little stone building is a cistern, and up in there they would store water, which I'm assuming came from the spring house up the hill. I'll have to come back one weekend so I can do a video on the inside of the house when the house is open. If you're ever in the area, don't forget to check out the Cravens House. There's so much history and beautiful views to go with it up here on Lookout Mountain. Thanks so much for stopping by and don't forget to join us next time as we continue recording history one road trip at a time.